Hello and welcome to a, another box of car fix and today what we're going to do is be replacing this uh, feed line uh, which you can see this is the top of the, the Mercedes Vito fuel filter now you can see at the top there that this connector, plastic connector at the top is broken uh, it's pretty a common occurrence so we're going to be replacing that so to start with we're just going to release the catches on the air box so this houses the filter. So there's one, two, four catches, two at the bottom right hand corner and two at the top right hand corner. There's also a Phillips head screw. Now you just need to unscrew this. You don't need to release it or don't take it out all the way. Just uh, pull it up so you can release the top. Now on the top of the intake in the engine here you've got the uh, air intake cross pipe, intake pipe. It's got two 10 millimeter bolts, which you just need to take off. Once you've done that, you just need to release the hose clamp, which connects the pipe to the intake box. Just give it a little jiggle. Yeah, a little bit tough to get out sometimes. I'm just going to employ the use of a screwdriver here just lightly to sort of pry it apart. So once you've got that off, I'm just releasing now from some clamps here. Some, it's a vacuum line that goes through with the brake booster. Um, this is the lower part of the intake and we're just going to open up this hose clamp as well. This comes apart pretty easy. At the back of this pipe, the crossover pipe, that's the one that goes across the top end, you're going to see this uh, PCV valve, I'm going to call it. So just take that out as well, that just pulls out. It's pretty straightforward. Now, once you've removed that top pipe, you can then get to another part of the intake system. Um, I think it's, a, it's a, a vacuum line, but in the manual. But Anyway, so you just need to release this clamp here. What I tend to do as well, though, although I'm not showing it here, is once I've released these, I tend to put a rag in there to stop bits getting into the, the air system. The other end of this, which you also need to remove, which is situated near the front of the engine, next to the expansion box, um, and next on top of the radiator. In the picture you just saw there, you should have been able just about to see the top of the hose clamp. Now it's really tight in here, you can only really get one hand in here. So I'm just using a little ratchet screw um ratchet wrench to get in there seven mil and release this hose clamp it's really tight so it's going to pull this out now try not to drop the actual clamp down as you're pulling it out probably get lodged somewhere down there so that's come out let's give us a bit more space what i've also done is just pulled up the uh, box that houses the filter. Later on I actually end up removing the box. I thought at first I'd have enough room just to, to pull it up like this, but I actually ended up having to remove it to get proper access. Okay, so now you can see the top mount of the engine. This is three mount, engine mounts in this vehicle. Um, there's another one. If you look in the middle of the screen there, you can see at the back there's another engine mount there. So what I'm doing at the moment, because I'm going to remove the engine mount on the top um, as you're facing the vehicle, left hand uh, mount, what I'm going to do is actually support the engine slightly. So just pop in a thick piece of wood, put your jack underneath, make sure it's put in the right place because as you can see from the back part of the screen there, you can see that there's actually a sump plug sort of protruding down slightly, so you don't want to sort of jack up against that so I'm giving it some extra support although there are still two mounts left on this vehicle so I'm just going to go in now and loosen the main bolt that goes into the frame and the, the remainder of the mounting for the engine there's a 21 mil socket you're going to need for this it's, it's in there quite hard um, just give it a go it's not rusted or anything so eventually it came out so this is the bolt here and now we're going to remove 
these Torx bit bolts. Now they take an E14 Torx bit, a uh, female bit. Uh, there's two at the back and three at the front. So this is a picture of the actual mount, the upper mount itself. So as you can see, it's the major main bolt that goes into the frame, three bolts at the front that go into the actual engine block, and two at the back. So we're never going to be removing those five. So I just took my flexi head wrench and I'm just releasing part of one of the coolant hoses there to get some more access. So when you go in to get this back one, what you're going to need to do is take out, as I said, take out the air box which pulls up. You're going to have to come in between the air box and next to a vacuum line that goes to the brake booster and go in at a slight angle to get to those back ones. The front one's pretty straightforward to get out. Once you've got those out, it's just a case of really just wiggling the uh, mount till it comes out. It's not overly difficult. There are two sort of like um, pins, if you like, which mark where it's got to go in to the actual, it's almost like dowels that mark where it goes into the engine. But to give a little wiggle, it comes out pretty simple. Just be aware of anything else that's around you. Once you've removed it, you can actually see the pump, the fuel pump, and you can see where it connects to uh, the line that we've got to replace. Now, at the bottom there, you've got a little like plastic part, which Mercedes called the release arm. And what you've got to do is push that up. And what that does is it actually pushes out the sides of the connector, enabling you to get it over the lip that is actually on the, the, the uh, fuel, fuel, um, fuel pump. So I'm just popping in a rag now to capture any excess diesel and I'm just pushing back against the plastic part of this in order to get it to release. It's a little bit tricky and you've got to be really careful of the line above it because you don't want to go and crack this and these plastic connectors will break relatively easily. So I'm just prying against the side of the fuel pump, not on the lip and pushing the actual feed line out and then it's just a case of fishing it out as I said be really careful about that line above because you don't want to break that as well otherwise you've got more to do okay so this is the new one that's the new feed line and what we're going to do is just you've got to sort of fish it in underneath the um, some coolant lines um, the upper radiator hose that goes to the uh, red from the thermostat. So what I'm doing here is now just trying to line it up. Now I couldn't quite get the shot to show you because you've got to come out to the side of the vehicle and lean over to get it. What I'm doing is straightening the actual uh, connector with my finger, keeping it straight so it's pointing towards the, the fuel uh, pump. And then I was just pushing slowly on the back with a screwdriver, pushing it straight in because what you don't want to do is bind up the O-ring. Right, so now I'm just going to remove the uh, fuel filter. So I'm starting with the inlet line, just release the screw on it, um, on its clamp. And just release it all the way out and then just wiggle it with, uh, you can wiggle it with your hand, where, you know, may, might need to use a pair of pliers, but don't take it easy, you've got to damage the actual hose. Uh, so once that's that's pulled out, it's um, over to the, the, the preheating valve. Um, what you want to do here is just use, I think it's a, t a T25 Torx bit, uh, male Torx bit, to get that out. Then you just have to bend out the control arms on the filter. Um, they bend away pretty easily. They're made to do this, so it's not too much of a problem. Um, and then it's a case of pulling up on it. Now, what I tend to do is I always tend to hold a rag in my hand when I'm doing these jobs, just in case... I also wear safety glasses just in case you get a bit of pressure and spray with the um, the fuel diesel petrol, I suppose. Right, so now on the side is an Allen key, and this actually holds the, the fuel for it in place. Just just loosen that up now and pop in your new filter. Make sure you fill the new filter with diesel before you put it in, otherwise you're going to have a serious air problem. So you just fill it in where the, the feed line goes, that's in the centre, just slowly fill it up, it, may, it takes a little bit of time, uh, fill that up. Now, what you're going to do is 
reconnect now to the feed line so that's a case of pushing in that little plastic tab pushing it forward so it opens up the legs if you like on the side of the connector and push that in and then pull it back in order to close it up these plastic connectors are on the low pressure lines on this vehicle the higher pressure ones have proper proper metal hose clamps and screws okay so pop back in the uh, the other valve push that down nice and firm then push the control arms back in and once you put the control back arms back in uh, you just put the mounting screw back in you know screw that down don't go crazy again push back in the, the other line tighten that up nice and tight obviously don't go crazy don't go crushing the, uh, um, the new filter that you've put in so tighten that up make sure it's all in line so as I said earlier in the video it's, it, this, this problem is really really common um, and obviously then it's just the o-ring holding the line in um, so it needs to be replaced so I'm just pushing the control arms back over now to make sure it keeps that in place lined up. Uh, try not to slip and break them. Right, so we're going to put back in the um, upper mount. Now at the bottom, don't forget those pins that you saw in that picture there. So these need to go into the holes that are there. Um, I started by pushing it through into the back and trying to get the back one lined up first because obviously I can see the front one, I can't see the back one. So it's a case of fishing the mount back in here, be careful of that um, vacuum line there uh, and also I think there's some wiring harness at the back there as well, so you be careful of that but it, it pretty much goes in straight forward um, so get the back one in, there's just enough room at the back there to fish your hand in behind and actually feel whether it's in place uh, so this is a picture of the mount again um, so I'm going to start by putting the bolts in. What I did was I put the front one in first and then the back ones. But what I'm going to do, the way I tightened it up was by tightening the front one up slightly and the furthest to the back right up to tighten those up. Now the angle I'm coming in at, you can see now where I'm coming in to get to that back one. That's the angle you're going to have to take. So once those are in, just tighten them up. Don't go crazy. When you take them out, you'll be able to feel how much pressure it takes to get them out. It's roughly the same amount of pressure to put them back. You know, so don't go crazy on this. You'll feel it. And then pop back in the main support and bolt, which goes into the lower part of that mount. Once again, just screw that home. This one requires, obviously, considerably more pressure to, to put it back in. Once it's in, just tighten it up. I used a breaker bar to to get it out and to put this one back in uh, to get the extra bit of leverage on it to make the job slightly easier. Once you've got that back in, you can remove your uh, support underneath. On the back of the airbox, when you put this back in there, you can see that like sort of protrusion jutting out, and that's got to go in that rubber grommet at the back there. It's got to push into that. So you've got to start by getting that pushed into there. This takes a bit of time. Um, it's, it's quite difficult. I was almost tempted to, to, to remove it, to be quite honest, um, but obviously not. Um, so push that back in. Once you've got that in, it's a case of reconnecting up the hoses. Um, so just pop those back in with your driver don't go crazy when you tighten it up remember to remove the rags that you put in there um, so I'm just putting the intake crosser pipe now back in uh, just pop that back on top tighten it back up when you when you you must remember to put back in the, the, the TCV there um, and also put the vacuum line back in place there. Uh, when you're putting the bolts back in for that, you know, don't go crazy. So I'm just checking everything now. Make sure those control arms are down. 
So now I'm starting the engine as you can hear it's struggling a little bit but this is to be expected. Um, it will start. It's always a bit difficult after a fuel filter change so far. But the main point is that we, we filled up that light, we filled up that fuel filter with fuel. If we hadn't have done that we would get definitely have a problem. So after a little bit, turning the engine over and it's third attempt started, started running fine. So that's how you do a uh, feed line on a Mercedes Vito. It's a, a, it's a reasonable repair. It's, it's not overly difficult, um, but you need to be aware of a few things. Make sure you wear safety glasses when, you, when you're taking those lines off. Um, another thing to do is make sure you jack support the engine correctly. Don't jack the engine up. Don't go pushing it up so you're almost jacking the vehicle because you will cause yourself a mischief there. Um, but apart from that, everything else is straightforward. Take your time on this one because obviously you don't want to cause any more problems. Um, but it's, it's a reasonable repair. Thanks a lot for watching Boxers Car Fix. Cheers. Bye.